praise God. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I just need you to, I mean, I just need you to think about it. One area in your life. Amen. That you're stuck. That one, that one area where you've been the same person for the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And you haven't been able to get past that. Amen. For some of it could be road rage. You've been reading your Bible. You've been studying your Bible. But every time somebody jumps in front of your car, it doesn't matter how much words you read. You keep reacting to that situation the exact same way. So I want you to lock in today. I want you to lock in on an area where as much Holy Spirit as you've gotten, as much Bible as you read, as many songs as you heard, as much prayer that you've done, that you can't seem to get a breakthrough in that area. And I want you and God to concentrate on that today. I want you and God to focus on that today. And I just believe, hallelujah, that the word that God has given me, you got to be careful. I want to be careful when I say the word that God has given me. I don't want you to think that this word came from studying the Bible. Amen. Praise God. This word didn't just come from, you know, me opening up uh, the Bible and just reading through the Bible. This came from some work me and God had to do. Praise God. And so I want you to get locked in on that area. And I want you to know that a lot of the prayers and the blessings and the, man, God, I'm frustrated, I'm tired, I want to get on the other side of whatever the other side of other stuff that you've been thinking about, I want you to know that you not being able to conquer in this area is holding you up from some of the blessings that God has in other areas. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm talking to somebody. You're in your living room right now. Somebody you watching with your family. I want you to, I want you to think about that thing that that one thing that you just can't get past. Amen. And God's got a word for you today because I want you to understand that, that there is a peace that's coming once you can get past that. There is some progress that's coming once you can get past that. Praise God. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Amen. Uh, we've been talking about the traits of the favor. Amen. And so last week we were introduced to repentance, that there's something about um, the men and women of the, of the Bible who were like giants we see them, we see David, we see, we see Jacob, amen. We, we see Peter, we see, we see Paul. We see these individuals just not being strong, but we see these individuals falling before the presence of God and saying, God, I repent. Create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, amen. So, so, so one of the traits of the greats, it's, the Bible is Genesis to Revelation, amen, and oftentimes, we talk about the Bible and we talk about all these great things about the Bible, but sometimes we miss that some of the giants in the Bible repented. Some of the giants in the Bible, that one of the things that made them great, one of the reasons why they were phenomenal in the sight of God is because they could repent. The Bible says that, that, that God favors a contrite heart and a broken spirit. The opposite of that is pride. And, and God, that's not, that, that is a characteristics of Satan. Amen. That is a denom, d- demonic characteristic. Amen. The Bible says that somehow God favors, that God hears, that God is attentive to. God said that, that David was the apple of my eye, not because he was perfect, but because David would repent. Praise God. David would repent. That, that, that Paul repented. Paul said, I can't believe that, that I kill men and women and children of God. Like, God, forgive me, God. I don't know what I was thinking. Amen. And so God favors those, amen, who's not prideful. God favors those who repent. God favors those who have a contrite heart and a broken spirit. Amen. I want to share something with you in the Word. Amen, amen, amen. We talked about it last week. Thank you, Jamie. We talked about it last week. Amen. Let's just do it again. One, two, three. Yeah, listen to me. Listen to me, please. There's some blessings on the other side of repentance, right? And I know we got good reasons for why I ain't going to repent. He ain't going to hurt me again. She ain't going to do this to me again. This ain't going to happen again. Look, 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 one of the things that God has shared with me that what we have to do is we have to get people out of our head and we've got to get God in our head. And so when you go, well, I ain't going to repent because you ain't going and he ain't going and they ain't going. So you put a human first, you made humans an idol and you sacrifice your relationship with God. You sacrifice your closeness with God. 
And we see what happened. Adam did the same thing. Amen. The Bible says that Adam was not, praise God, he wasn't deceived. Eve was deceived. Adam wasn't deceived, meaning Adam knew exactly what he was doing, and Adam sacrificed his relationship with God for Eve. Amen. And, and why did he sacrifice his relationship? Because there was some repentance that had to be done, and Adam was like, yo, I'm good on that. Like, I, I, I'd, I'd rather not acknowledge what I've done wrong, and I'd rather stay in this relationship. Praise God. And I'm telling y'all, we have to be careful, amen, not to make humans an idol, amen. And, and I don't even mean it in the way you think I mean it. I mean it in a way where we have sacrificed God because we, we, uh, of our get back with humans. Praise God. I want to share this with you. Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. We, we, we talked about it last week, amen. And then the man and his wife. Praise God. This is deep. Even the way they word this, amen, because the responsibility was Adam's. The responsibility was Adam's. Like, I really want y'all to think this through. The responsibility was Adam's. The responsibility to stay in the garden was Adam's. The responsibility to keep his relationship with God was with Adam. I'm trying to tell y'all, we don't have a responsibility to our past the way it's so sick the way we, we, we honor our past and the way we hold on to our past. Like, if we would just hold on to God the way we held on our past, like our past get way more credit than God gets. Our past get way more energy than God gets. Our past get way more of our attention than God gets. Like, our past, when it comes to our past, we're going to protect our past, but we won't protect the God of our past. It said the man and his wife, meaning what? God was like, bruh, this don't got nothing to do with her. This between me and you. This don't got nothing to do with her. Like, it was me and you before it was me and her, and maybe that's the problem for a lot of us. It wasn't really me and God before it was you and that human you with. Maybe it wasn't you and God. Maybe it was just you and that human. And so it's tough. And so God is saying, what are you doing? Like, before Eve was even, it was me and you in the garden. Before she even came, it was me and you. Like, you have a responsibility to me right now. The man and his wife, amen, heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. Listen to me very closely. I just want you to understand. Nothing, nothing has gone wrong at this point. I need you to understand. You've heard me preach this before. You must understand this, that even though Adam and Eve sinned against God, nothing changes. They're still in the garden. Listen to me. Okay, I want y'all to, to catch this. If it was what you think it would be, as soon as she ate, amen, she could have fallen dead, or when she ate and fell, or she ate and gave it to him, and they both could have fell and died. Amen. Nobody died. Everything is still intact. Now I'm just going to talk to myself. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you in the living room. I'm going to talk to you in the living room. Listen to me very closely. Nothing changes here. They're still in the garden. They still have access to God. Nothing changed. She ate the fruit. She gave it to her husband. Nothing changed. The only thing that changed was God was like, I'll just like, okay, I want to read this again. The Lord, as he was, y'all, we might miss this because we get so religious, like we get so into like, like we get so caught up in denomination that we forget the real word. This Bible is deep. It's saying that God himself was walking in the garden in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. You can't get no, y'all, everybody want to go to heaven. They was in heaven. You, this is heaven right here. You God coming down to talk to you. <laughs> Just say, it's no greater, it, there's no greater access. There's no greater gift than God himself. You just sinned against God. This is how loving God is. This is why we got to stop. Like, all of us got to stop letting our past be so strong. We got to stop. This is God. This, he had a relationship with God. They messed up. God didn't even call them from heaven. The Bible says after they messed up, he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. This is a perfect environment. It's the cool of the day. God is down there, and God said, Adam, <laughs> I'm, I'm home. I'm home. Like, this is what we've always done. I've always met y'all in the garden. This is our spot. This is our place. Adam, where are you? Where, where are y'all at? God didn't do nothing different. Please hear what I'm saying. What makes sin sickening, what makes our past so sick, is that it is not God who separated himself from us. We trying to act like God moved somewhere. We trying to act like God different. We trying to act like God on some. God said, even in your sitting, I'm in, Adam, where are you? I'm home, let's talk. 
I'm home. This is what, like, this is what we do every day. We meet, we talk, we commit. I'm home. Bible said, and they hid from the Lord. God didn't hide from nobody. You're, listen, I just want to make sure we clear because people are going to teach you the wrong thing. It's not in the Bible. Your sin is what not separates you from God. You separate you from God. Your sin ain't never separates you from God. Or he would have never, like, this would have been over. He wouldn't even let humans live. He said, you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's not what made me, uh, uh, that's, what, that's not what interrupted our relationship. You hear from me because what you thought I was thinking. <laughs> Praise God, I'm talking to somebody right now. I just want to make sure we get that part clear. I want to make sure that we clear that part up right there. God is saying, now, I never said nothing. Like, how did you even think, I, like, where did that come from? <laughs> Like, how are you telling me what I'm thinking? Like, how would you even think that you need to hide from me? That's why I said, look, man, this is me. I say this with all sincerity. A lot of you would be a lot further in life if the people that you're listening to, you stop listening to those people. I'm just, it's not even helpful. Like, I'm not even tripping on people gossiping and talking and listening. I'm just saying for your own sake, you're listening to the stuff that's not even helping you and you're still listening. Like, at some point, you just got to grow up and be like, yo, I know that I, I feel good when I gossip. Like, I know I feel good when, we, I, when people in my ear, I know I feel good when I'm messing up and they messing up and I ain't where I'm supposed to be and they ain't where they supposed to be and we kind of talking to each other. I know it makes me feel good, but at some point, when you get out your 20s, you in your 30s, your 40s, at some point, you got to get people out your ear and you got to look at your environment and just go, this ain't working. This kind of talking ain't doing nothing for me. It's actually taking me further. I, you know what? I really enjoy it. Like, don't lie. I enjoy this kind of talking. I do. I, I enjoy talking about people. I do. I, because I'm not where I want to be, and I don't feel comfortable, and I don't feel good about myself. And so I'm going, of course, it makes sense. Like you, Here's the beautiful thing about God. You don't have to lie about your sin. Okay, maybe when you're dealing with another human, you maybe you feel like you need to do it because they're going to treat you different. But I promise you, you don't got to do that when you're dealing with God. The Bible said, and they hear from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, Adam, <laughs> you're not in our spot. <laughs> Come on, just do me a huge favor. Like, I love it when people say, I'm good. But it's like, ah, you say you're good, but you, like, that ain't, that ain't the, like, that's not your normal spirit. You and your adaptive. That's not, something's wrong. Now, I know you won't want to say what's wrong, but something's wrong. He said, Adam, where are you? Meaning what? You're not in your spot. You're not in our spot. Like, when I normally come, you here, uh, she there, y'all waiting for me, everybody greeting me. I came home today. God said, I came home today to my spot, and ain't nobody in the spot. Where are you? What, what's going on? Where are y'all? This is where we usually meet. This is where we usually commune. This is where we usually do our thing. Come let us reason together, saith the Lord of hosts. Come let us. Come on, come on. If my people, which are called by my name, huh, would humble themselves, seek my face, and turn, then I will. He said, Adam, what's up? What's wrong? Where you at? You're not in, a, you're not in your normal spot. You're not yourself. Like, what's going wrong? What's, what happened? Listen to me. Do me a huge favor. When you're not in your spot, even the dog, if you got a dog, the dog know you ain't in your spot. I'm just being real. I don't got no animals, and I've been around people with dogs, and the dog can tell something wrong with you. The dog, like, hold up. You're not your, hold on. You normally act in a certain, you didn't came home today. What happened? <laughs> So if the dog know you some, humans know you some, God know you some, let's just stop, like, let's just open up and just be transparent, like, no, I'm not myself, I'm not, but stop hiding, because when you hide, that means the enemy and you get that opportunity to commune. And you don't want to commune with him. Okay, let's go. I want to show you this real quick. This is crazy. This is crazy. And he answered... I heard you were in the garden, and I was afraid. What? What? Like, y'all, we got to gotta deal with God very, very transparently. We, I, what? I've always been in the garden. <laughs> this is where we meet. What happened? Uh, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And so the Lord said, uh-oh, we got a problem. You've been talking to people. Yeah, you've been talking to people. Yeah, you can always tell when people are talking to people. Like you've been talking to people. Or, or you can always tell when people have been talking to the devil because they talk to you differently. 
They're not talking to you the same loving, sweet way. They're talking to you different. That's how you know you've been talking to the enemy. I'm telling y'all, even in sin, y'all, we don't got to talk differently. I'm just being real. But the devil will have you like, you know how God is about sin. Yes, he is, but he's, a, he's about sin. About, he's not about you like that. It's a difference between the two. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. He don't feel the same way about you that he feels about sin. Even though the sin is in you, it, y'all not one. Because Jesus died for the sin, so you and the sin are separated. Y'all not the same. Now, humans may treat you according to your sins, but that's not God. And you don't have to worry about how humans treat you because humans don't decide if you get blessed or not. Humans don't wake you up or not. Like that, You got to stop doing that. You got to stop treating God like you treat humans. Watch this. He said, whoa, who took, who took, who, where'd you get that vocabulary from? Now, God is smart. He already know you've been talking to the devil because only the devil is naked. Nobody in the kingdom is naked. Everybody in the kingdom is blessed. Everybody, there's no lack in heaven. There's no, only lack on earth. Who told you that? Now, he already knew, but it's like, who you been talking to? Because based on who you've been talking to, that's why you acting like that. And so he's just like, okay, you told me you was naked, so the, the cat is out the bag. <laughs> Have you eaten from the tr- tree? Because <laughs> this is God. We could have started here. <laughs> we could have started with, I know you ate from the tree. I know, you, I already know that. It's like you're dealing with your mom and you're sitting there lying saying you're doing it. It's like you're dealing with your wife. It's like we already know what's going on. It's like, but God has given you an opportunity to say what's going on. I don't know what it is about saying what's going on, but something beautiful happens. When you really say what's going on, you move forward. When you lie, then you go backwards. And so God was like, I'm going to give you all a chance. Okay, good. All right. All right. I see where this is going. All right. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Everybody say feedback. Feedback. <clears throat> I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. When we hear repent, let's, let's, let's go back. I want to show y'all something real quick because this is what you're hearing. You're hearing when, you, when, you, when, when God addresses you, you're hearing, I am afraid. You're hearing, I am naked. And you're saying, then I need to hide. Amen. I rebuke you, say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And what the devil has introduced into our community, discipline in a, in a way that's destructive. So what's happening is the, the discipline has always come when something was wrong and it was a certain way that the discipline came. Nobody didn't mean no harm, but the discipline made you feel disconnected. Like the way discipline happened was for that time frame of the discipline, you ain't necessarily feel the love. Amen. And so what the devil wants to do is the devil wants you to hear discipline. He wants you to hear negative. He wants you to hear bad. And so then when you're in a relationship and when you're, I don't care if it's an intimate relationship, a friendship, business. So when you start hearing discipline, you hear that. When you start hearing people tell you you didn't do what you're supposed to do and you did, now you're hearing that and your filter's wrong. And so then you hear naked, you hear I did something wrong, you hear God is mad at me, and then you withdraw and you hide. Let me show you what it really is, though. It's really, what it really is is feedback. Amen. Praise God. It's, it's what it really is. That's Because God loves you. It's really his feedback. And the reason why we know it's feedback, because if it was discipline, he don't even got to do that. He could just discipline you like with a thought and just have you either inhale or he could kill you. He could do whatever he wanted to do. Right. And so we so we got to we, we got to change this thinking. It's not you on punishment. Right. You ever call somebody and they like what's wrong? Like you could tell the way they've been disciplined or the way they responded to discipline growing up, because as soon as you say call me like they panicking. I was, talking to my, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they was like, how you doing? I'm like, bro, I'm blessed. Like, I'm in a real good space. What happened? I said, what? I just told you I was in a real good space. But what happened that you telling me you in a good space? Something must have been wrong. I said, you sick. I just told you that I just had, I'm having a great week. This has been a great year that God is really showing me some stuff, and I'm fit, and it's just like, it's a beautiful time for me right now. How did you hear that? Because for some of us, whatever happened in our youth when we were younger and the way we were disciplined, or and I'm not even just saying at home, it could have been in your friendships or whatever, you see it as negative. I just want you to say feedback. feedback. 
All God is giving you when he's telling you to repent is feedback. That's all it is. It's just feedback. Watch this. It is constructive feedback. Now, it needs to be constructive. Now, some of us have been hurt so bad that when we do, and here's where we got to be careful, y'all, and I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it clearly. So because we love each other so much, we give each other a lot of constructive feedback, but we give the world praises. Yep. So with my son, I saw my son, I'm like, yep, on his butt. But then he'll see me with another child and I'm encouraging him. And it's like, whoa, why I don't get none of that? Right? We don't mean no harm, but for us in the family, we just bop, bop, bop. But then we got, a, we got love for everybody outside of our homes. We got love for everybody else. We talk nice to everybody else. We encourage everybody else. But at the crib, we don't like, we don't do all that encouraging. It's like you're supposed to do that. Like, that's a part of your responsibility. You, Jalen, you live in this house. Jada, you live in this house. I'm not about to encourage you for the one. But then they see me go on the road, and now I'm encouraging people. And they like, whoa, where that come? I'll never forget. I started encouraging Jalen about 22, 23, and he was pissed. And I was like, why you hurt? I'm encouraging you. He's like, where was that at though when I was 14? Where was that at when I was 15? You weren't encouraging me like that. And so we got to be careful because for a lot of us, we got constructive criticism, but we don't got the love. We don't, we, don't got, we, don't, we don't got the affirmation. We don't got the, and, and God got both. And so that's why God was, was right in the midst. That's why he came down. He didn't discipline from the back. That's why he came in the cool. That's why he was nice. He like, what's going on? Where everybody at? <laughs> I just want to talk. <laughs> Something happened. I want to find out what happened. Let's fix this. Let's, let's come. Let us reason together, saith the Lord of hosts. Do you understand what that means? Let us reason together. Do you understand that you would never just be able to go park at the White House and open up the gates to the White House and just go in the White House and you and just Biden would just sit there and reason together? Do you know what it would take for you to get into the White House? Yet the creator of the universe is saying, the creator of the White House is saying, Adam, where are you? I'm here. Let's talk. What happened? But what do we do? We hide. Watch this. Constructive feedback, the way God intends it, allows you to make adjustments. Say adjustments. So, so, so when God was in the garden, this was an opportunity for Adam to make an adjustment. This was a chance for him to refine his skills. Let me tell you why. Every, when you pray, you want more money. When you pray, you want more autonomy of your life. You want to be able to get up when you want to get up and do what you want to do when you want to do it. Listen to me. Those, you don't make more money when you had the same skill set that you had 10 years ago. I don't care what you're doing. If you're doing construction and you're doing it exactly like you were doing 10 years ago and you ain't up your game, you're not about to make no more money. If you speak for a living and your speaking sounds just like it sounded 10 years ago, you're not about to make no more money. If you are in the medical field and you're not, well, medical field, you got to get certified. Like I'm just saying, I just wish that everything we did, you had to get recertified and you had to get them CEUs because most of us have done nothing to grow in that area, but we want as much as we see other people getting who refine their skills. You haven't refined your skills. How are you going to get more? You're doing the same thing you were doing 10 years ago. God is saying, when I give you feedback, I need you to make the adjustment. Because if you make the adjustment, whatever you pray for is on the other side of the adjustment. I need you to refine your skills. So when my wife said, you ain't reading, and I wasn't reading, my skill set, but when I start reading, I start, you can, like if we go back to when she asked me that, and we look, we compare those messages to these messages. But some of y'all in the environment, you ain't making no adjustments, you just praying. And you think just because you're praying, it, it don't work like that. You think because you're reading your Bible, it doesn't matter if you're reading your Bible, if your skill set is not being redefined, if you're, uh, you ain't making adjustments. You just read more so you can continue to do as sweet as you were doing before in 2022. What's wrong with my marriage? You're, you, don't, you're, you ain't got no new skills. Why am I getting in a marriage to get divorced? Or why am I getting with people that ain't working out? Because you haven't revived your communication, your skill set, like relational skill sets. You're still mad. You're still bitter about something. 
You're still holding on to grudges. Even though it says, if you would study it, it says it bears no record of wrong. You're still bearing record of wrong. There's no way you're going to be able to, but you're not taking feedback. You're hearing sermons, but you're not making the adjustments. You're still, bear, you're still talking about the past like it's today. It bears no record of wrong. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Where there is love, it never fails. And we're failing because that ain't love. That's as long as you're doing what I want you to do, we cool. But once you don't do what I want you to do no more, I withdraw, I withdraw the love that I give you. That ain't, that's not Corinthians. That's not Corinthians. You're not making the adjustment. Or you change your approach, which does what? It leads to more successful outcomes and continuous personal and professional growth. Yep, let's go back to Adam. Yep, Adam. Listen to me. Adam ignored God's intent to provide feedback. That's what he did. I'm leaving you. This is it. We may go back to the other one, but this is it. I need y'all to catch this one. This is why we sick, y'all, and I mean that. There are those of us who are mentally ill because you didn't take the feedback. There's those of you who are physically ill, diseases. Do you know what disease is? Disease is, thing, like me and Moose did some research. Disease is an issue that's in your brain that was never resolved, and it's still up there bouncing back and forth. And then as it's bouncing back and forth, it creates problems. Like you become sick. Now it's in your blood. Now it's in your cells. Because you didn't let it go. And, it's, and so uh, he didn't, she didn't. This don't have to do with he or she. This is God coming to you and saying, I'm about to free you up. But now you want to focus on Eve and what Eve did. And you want to focus on Adam and what Adam, And you want to focus on the serpent. This don't got nothing to do with none of them, Adam. It was once me and you. How Eve get in here now? No, I'm just being real. When we praying and God is telling us to make adjustments and we don't because some man or some woman, you're, you're telling God, Feedback is an, a direct indication of the relationship. When you tell God no, you're telling him what kind of relationship y'all got. You're telling the God of the universe, bro, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in what you're telling me. What's more important to me right now than this hurt? I'm not interested in what you're talking about. I'm interested in this pain that I went through. I'm not interested in that. Did you see what happened to me? Did you see they didn't do this and they didn't do that? I'm not interested. You're standing before the God of the universe that can recreate everything, and you're still talking about something that happened in the past, which you're, you're telling God who you think he really is, not who you say he is in church, not who you say he is in prayer. Feedback is a direct, a direct correlation between you and the person. When, you, when somebody gives you feedback and you don't take it, you're telling you about the relationship. If you take feedback from somebody, you're only taking feedback from somebody you really got a relationship with. Period. You're not taking relation. You're not taking advice from people, and most of you don't take no advice. You like to give a whole bunch of it, and then you wonder why people don't want to hear from you because you ain't hearing from nobody. You just want to talk and tell people what to do, but you're not interested in being talked to and told what to do. He said, "Adam, before there was a serpent, Adam." I just want to appeal to somebody listening today. You about to get your breakthrough. And I'm not talking about your breakthrough in your marriage. I'm talking about your personal breakthrough. I'm not talking about your breakthrough financially. I'm talking about your personal breakthrough. That if you get that breakthrough, it's going to, do you realize a lot of people are going to die and they're going to go to the grave with all that hurt and all that pain? It ain't going to never go nowhere. But we call ourselves Christians. You're wondering why when you preach or when you teach, it ain't with power. Because people can tell you still got stuff you all went on to. Not that you hold it on to, but you ain't interested in letting go. Like you ain't even had no, you, like you ain't even had no plans on listening to God. You're not even putting your healing on layaway. I'm just saying, you ain't even putting it on layaway. You just like it's just not gonna happen, God. It's just not, I'm not even gonna work with you. I'm not even gonna be in the process. Like I'm gonna hold on to this forever. Adam ignored God's intent to provide feedback and shift the focus from God's care and correction to Eve. Communicating, I don't want correction. God was like, well, the next step then is consequences. Y'all got to catch this one before we go. I'll take my time. Let me slow down. Listen to me very closely. It's not an option, y'all. It's correction or consequences. It's not an option. No, 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 listen to me. You, you're looking at your bank account. You broke. You broke. And now, because you've not listened to the correction, now you're going deeper into a hole. Let me take my time. 
let me take my time. I want to make sure we, 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 not, we don't just come here today and you just hear a word. I'm not going to give it an adjective. We're not going to describe it. Just you hear for a word and you don't do nothing with the word. Listen to me very closely. Your bank account was what it was. You were, you were robbing Peter to pay Paul. You are, literally, you are literally exhausted at the end of the month and you put in so much time and so much energy and you have nothing to really show for it. Like you know spiritually this ain't right. And when God came to you and he said, let's make the correction, you decided not to make the correction. And because you decided not to make the correction, you are worse today than you were when he first pulled you to the side. Take the feedback, y'all. Take the feedback. So here's what happens. I know you already know it, so forgive me. I'm talking to somebody maybe that's unchurched and they've not, you know, read the book of Genesis, so I got to help them out. So what happens is God gives Adam a chance. He does not make the correction. Next thing you know, they kicked out the garden. And they're, now they're introduced to work. They weren't supposed to be working. Now work is, t- listen to me. When people go, and I, Christians, y'all for real, y'all kill me with this. But when Christians go, he lazy. They ain't lazy. They are dealing with the consequences of work. When you read the Bible, the Bible specifically says, God says, when you work, one of the challenges with work is how it's going to make you feel. It's in the Bible. You're not going to be excited about it. Like you're going to toil the soil and you're not going to be excited about it. This is what the Bible says. So when you say they're lazy, they're not lazy. They just don't want to deal with the consequences of work because God says not whatever Adam was doing before when he was working, it was great. But whatever he started doing afterwards, he started sweating. He got tired. He was not sweating before. He was not getting tired before. He said, Eve, when you have a child, you're going to feel like you're about to die. And y'all got to get out the garden. Now you got to go find food. It ain't going to just be growing for you like it used to. It's just not going to be abundance no more. Now you're going to know what lack feel like. No, 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 no. Please hear what I'm trying to tell you. If when, when God say make the correction, you don't. You don't. It's not neutral at that point. You don't not make the connection to what God is telling you to do, and you don't correct yourself, and you stay right there. Then we look up. They got kids, and the kids is killing each other. You done finally had kids, now your kids beefing. Your son take your other son's life. It don't stop. If you do not take the feedback, if you do not do correction, you'll have a life of consequences, and when are you going to just stop with the pride and the ego? When do we just stop? When do we just quit? When do we just throw in the white towel? When do we just surrender? When do we just give up and say, God, your way is right. My way is not. I quit. But you keep fighting with your spouse. You keep fighting with your kids. You keep getting fired from jobs. You keep getting in different relationships. You keep getting sick. And you get worse and worse and worse. It don't stop. Listen to me. Take the feedback. I feel sorry for all the people who've ever had to give me feedback, but it worked. I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for everybody who had to endure with me to give me feedback, but it worked. No, it worked. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. It worked. I just woke up this morning and was running miles. It worked. Now you're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm at a peace that I've never been at in my life. It worked. I got generals now. I'm not doing stuff on my own. It worked. I'm reading and studying. It worked. <laughs> I got books. I'm calling people. It worked. I'm making good money as a speaker. I was a high school dropout. I couldn't hardly read. It works. The feedback works. Take it. Don't just give it to other people. You take some for yourself too. It works. It works. I promise you, it works. My man told me when I went to the hospital. He said, you over 50, do me a favor. You good, but do me a huge favor. Don't be cutting nothing. I'm like, bet, I ain't cutting nothing. Don't do no chainsaw. Most men over 50, when they come in here, chainsaw. I ain't doing chainsaws. I promise you, we come to church, ah, uh, E, you ain't gonna do, no, nope, I ain't doing no chainsaw. I don't care how you feel about it. <laughs> he said, whatever you do, don't climb up on ladders. Bet that, I'm not climbing on no ladder. That's all I needed was the feedback. And I'm just saying, this is a physician who's seeing men, and he's saying most men who, who mess up, they fall up. My boy just fell off of a doggone, uh, uh, my oquidite. My man fell off, of, uh, he was at, um, uh, come on, help me, I don't want to say the wrong word. Uh, it's a grocery store uh, in, in, uh, in Atlanta, but he works there. And he was up on the ladder and fell off the ladder and hit his head, and now he in the Publix. He worked there. He was on the ladder. My man, the doctor wasn't talking. I know some of y'all think the doctor just talked. He wasn't talking. He was saying, listen to me. When you get over 50, your balance ain't the same. 
When you get over 50, bro, your whole, it ain't the same. So don't get on nothing. If you want Christmas lights, pay somebody. If you want the gutters clean, that's what the doctor told me in a room by ourselves after he gave me that test. He said, it's time, I had to give you the test, time to have a real serious conversation now. You're over 50, it's a lot about to change. I'm not on no ladders. Listen to me, take the feedback. Take the feedback. Look, be dope with giving it because in our community, we need to give it. Okay, one more time, I'm sorry. Adam ignored God's intent to provide feedback. This was nothing but a feedback session. Adam, where are you? Something happened. Something went wrong, son. Something happened. I could tell in the atmosphere, something, something happened. Something went wrong. Okay, yep, Lucifer, yep. He convinced y'all to do what I told you not to do. It's okay, though. We good. Let's just talk. Let's just talk. Shh. It's so weird to me in the body of Christ how we can talk the devil talk, but we can't come together to talk God's talk. We can talk in secret, but we can't talk in public. We could talk in secret. We can have little meetings and people talking in private, but then when it's time, we can't talk in, oh, we go, you're going to get more out of talking to the person that you need to talk to than you're going to do in the corner. It, let's, they they should have just talked to God. Everything would have been okay. He was talking to the devil. There was no, he had no intent for anything to go right in your life. There was no intent for him to tell you to take for the fruit because he was looking after your good. If he wasn't looking after you. He was telling you to do. And now God is saying, let's talk. I just want to give you some feedback. So let's reverse it, y'all. What would have happened if Adam would have been like, God, how you doing? Good to see you. No, come on. Let's, let's, let's talk, y'all, because we always stop here. Let's go. Let's reverse this. What if Adam would have just been like, God, man, I'm sorry. Some kind of way the serpent was hollering at Eve. I don't know. I don't even know why she entertained him, but she did. And then when she did it, and then she came to me, you know that she's bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh, God. I was the only one. All the animals had somebody. I ain't had nobody. I got caught up. I got caught up. And I knew it was wrong when she brought it to me. I knew it was wrong, God, but, but I didn't want to lose her. And so I wasn't deceived. You know I wasn't deceived. You know I knew what was going on. You know I, I did the analytical boy. I, I saw it all through. But then I thought about it. Like, if I tell you the truth, then you may end up getting rid of her and I'm by myself again or getting rid of both of us and we're not close to you no more. Like, you're not going to deal with us no more. And then God could have said, oh, son, who told you that? Oh, no, that's not my character. I would not I would never do that. I would never do this. I would never. Okay. Let's sit down. Let's, let's reason together. Let's figure out how we can undo this. Let's figure out how we can make this thing right. Anybody in the room want to make it right? No, I plead with you. Anybody in the room want to make it right? You're so married to wrong. You're so married to your past. You're trying to prove yourself so much. You're trying to be so strong that you just, you, you're ignorantly weak. You're so set up for the devil and the spirit you're in right now. You don't have a repentant spirit. You don't have a, you're not going to change. That's a, that's a fertile ground for Lucifer. That's, that, the devil eat that up. That's not a contrite heart. That's not a broken spirit. And I'm not talking about humans. I'm talking about you and God. You've gotten so deep that God can't even tell you nothing. God can't even tell you to change at this point. Just imagine if he would just, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I did it. And God could have said, all right. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, just like we created heaven and the earth, we got to, we got to recreate that. And the darkness doesn't bother us because we looked at the earth and it was dark and void and the spirit of the living God moved. The spirit can move on this situation and correct it. But we can't correct when we hide. We can't correct when we don't want to talk about it. We can't correct when we don't want to address God. We can't, we can't do it when our past is stronger than the creator himself. And then we know we're wrong, and we keep doing it, and we're okay with it. That's, that's, that means that we've gotten to a place where we're sick. And God is like, stop, please, because you're going to have to. I'm God, and I love you, but I'm going to have to get out of the way now. I'm gonna have, listen, I'm talking to somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you. God's going to have to, God's gonna have to, he's going to have to leave you to Satan. 
and then you're going to be dealing with consequences. Aren't, aren't, you, ti- aren't you tired of the consequence? Like, like, listen to me very closely. If that's one thing about me, I promise you. I'm, I don't know what, but consequences. I'm like, okay, it's going too far now. We're dealing with consequences now. It's just too much. <laughs> Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Jamie, let's go back to the one before this one. I'm going to let you go. Constructive feedback allows you to adjust. You're coming right now. Somebody's watching. You're standing right now, wherever you are right now. Let your pride go. God is saying to you today, right now, you have a chance to adjust. When I call them off, you hear your spirit, you hear your situation. You know you're going backwards and you're not going forward and you're tired of going backwards. It's costing you now. It's starting to cost your family now. Come, make the adjustment. Number one adjustment, that's you. You're coming right now. God is saying, come, you need to make some adjustments. You're coming right now. You need to make some adjustments. Right now, you need to make some adjustments. Amen. You need to make some adjustments. Number two, you need to refine your skill set. You're still on the same thing you was on 10 years ago. You have not, you've not, you've not, your skill set has not gotten better. You want more, you want to be able to do more for Christ, but your skill set is not, is not there. You need to refine your skill set. Number three, your approach. You got a problem with your approach. You ain't got a problem with what you're doing, but you have an, your approach is a problem. Your approach is, an, is a problem, and you need to work on your approach. God's calling you right now. You need to work on your approach. Amen. you like, God, I need, more, I need more successful outcomes. The outcomes I'm getting are not, they're not, they're not, these are not the outcomes that I want. These are not the outcomes that I want, Father. Come on, you're coming. I, these are not the outcomes. I, I not, this is not what I'm praying for. This don't look like what I want it to look like. This don't, this ain't it. My, reading the Bible, fasting and praying, this ain't, this ain't it. This ain't what it's supposed to look like. Final one, Lord, I want to, I want to, I'm good, but I want continuous personal growth. Like, I'm, I, I need to grow. I need to grow at a, at a much faster pace than what I'm doing. Amen. You're coming. Professional growth. I, professionally, I need to go to the next level. You're coming. Press, 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 press. We see you at home. We see you at home. Praise God. We want to start from the beginning, Father, before the past got so powerful. Before the past, Lord, begin to teach us how we should talk and how we should respond and what we should do. That, that thing was painful. It was. It, it hurt. It was devastating. But we want to go back and instead of letting the pain dominate, we want to go back and let you dominate. We want to go back, Father. We know, we, know, we know that you are more powerful than anything we've ever experienced, good or bad, great or ugly. And we want to go back. We want to go back, and this time we don't want to hide, and we don't want to run and let our pain comfort us. We don't want to let our pain tell us what to do. We don't want to, we don't want to let our pain control us. We want to go back, and we want to give you the opportunity to give us feedback. How should we, we know how we acted, we know how we responded, we know what we did, but we want to go back. How should we have done it, Lord? How should we have approached it? How should we have not made it about us? How should we have allowed it to glorify your name? How, how, Lord, when you say all things work together for the good, we didn't necessarily see how all things work together for the good in that. We saw the pain. We saw the hurt. We couldn't hear the feedback, Lord, because we hid. We were so, we, take us back. Help us to start all over again, Lord. And this time when we come out of it, May you be God. May you be our Lord and Savior. May you give us our cues. May you tell us how we should respond, how we should talk, how we should act, what we should do, and not our pain tell us. We've dealt with too many consequences already, Lord, of living a life of pain. We've de- we've... Now it's time to get a reward for it. So forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. You know that... that... You know we know if, it, if we knew it was going to go down this way, we would have never done it, Lord. You know that. You know if Adam and Eve knew it would have turned into that, they would have never done it. And so have mercy upon us. Oh, Father, have mercy upon us. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. And bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you Saturday at 11 for Sabbath service. For all of our announcements, upcoming events, and special programming, please visit our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Your tangible support of this ministry makes all the difference in the world, and we can't thank you enough for your commitment. If you'd like to support this ministry, please use our cash app at dollar sign APOC Global. If you would prefer a more traditional approach, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org. On behalf of pastors Thomas and Tyus, their wives and families, and the whole of your A Place of Change ministry family, until we meet again, be blessed.